Folks, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. We're gonna talk about gravel driveways today. A lot of us have to deal with those. We're standing on one right now. I'm not gonna say I'm an expert. I'm definitely not. I've put in about 4,000 foot of gravel driveway. I've got my own list of do's and do nots and uh, a lot of trial and error, a lot of different tools that I've used, what I've found to be most effective. A lot of the videos that I saw out there when I was trying to get an idea of what I wanted to do before I'd ever put in a driveway were mainly based on like a commercial crew doing the install and that's good but they have a lot of very specialized equipment to do just that kind of an application and for most of us we have a tractor and we want to use tools with a tractor and now that's not to say i never used a skid steer because i i have a skid steer and i love skid steers too so uh, you'll see some of the the overlay footage in here that shows some tractors some skid steers Gives you an idea. Maybe you're gonna, maybe you have a skid steer on hand, maybe you have a tractor, but you can find the tool one way or another to get the job done. And if you're leaning towards a certain tool, maybe the video evidence tells you otherwise that you shouldn't go that route, or maybe it confirms that you should. Now, the driveway that we're gonna take you through today is gonna be all covered in limestone. I just recently finished this driveway earlier this spring, but it was a labor of love over the last uh, couple of years as we moved in. We did it kind of section by section and well, I didn't wanna spend all that money at one time either. So we saved a ton of money doing it ourselves. In fact, made a video a while back, essentially showing you how you could pay for your tractor. You know, if you, have a, if you have a big project like this, you could just pay for your tractor with one project. And that's essentially what we would have done if we would have done all of this just with one machine and a handful of tools, we would have had, we would have saved money. You know, I, I probably have close to $40,000 in materials that are wrapped up in here. Uh, doing this entire 2,000 foot driveway. And so that's of course just one project. There's a lot of things going on in a homestead too. So let's get into it here. First thing you gotta do is figure out where you're gonna put your driveway. And sometimes that's pretty straightforward. Other times it can be a, you know, a bit of a guess or maybe um, you can get creative with it. So our other property that we had where we put a 2,000 foot driveway in, we kind of made it a meandering little winding path so that it would look scenic as you Kind of drove through the property and through the field and um, you weren't just going in a straight line where well i mean it also takes out the the headache of trying to maintain a straight line <laughs> i'm not very good at that so the the meandering flow to it was really nice uh to solve that problem as well now out here at our, our current property we already had a starting point uh, there was an existing driveway well secondary driveway coming off of the main road that had a culvert installed already it was just it was it needed to be redone you know it had not been maintained at all and so we brought in a lot of gravel uh, and built that back up to where it needed to be and then we kind of started our next section of that was connecting what you can see right now winding all the way over there into the distance and that actually connects to our other driveway which is the paved one and there's a little apron that teed off of there which was just a natural connection point so that was already laid out for us that made sense and then we have a lane that goes back to our barn which was straightforward cut and dry of where we put that road and then we just wrapped everything right around our barn too with a nice big parking pad and so this area was it was logical right there was no other natural place to put the driveway so that step was was pretty easy to take care of now the next big question is what do you do do you just lay down gravel on your existing ground and spread it out and you're good to go or do you need to dig it out or scrape it out or level it out or, or what do you got to do and you're gonna get a lot of opinions there, no matter where you look on the internet, no matter what comment section you see. Uh, you know, I, it may vary a little bit depending on your conditions, on what kind of soil and dirt you're working with. Here we have a decent amount of topsoil. And so what we did is we took a lot of different machinery because I wanted to experiment and show different tools in action. And so we took roto rakes uh, right here in this area. We took a disc to do a main lane that we had. Up in my barn, I used a rear blade. At our other property, we used a tiller. We used a bucket on a skid steer. Maybe other tools as well. We used a whole variety. And what I found works best for me is using a tiller. And the reason that is, on a tractor, okay, is that tiller goes down maybe on the first pass three, four inches. A lot of tillers will go down seven or eight inches but you're not gonna get that. Seldom are you gonna get that in the first pass. That's a multiple pass type of situation, but you get three or four inches of worked up topsoil. So if you have sod and weeds and everything in there, 
you're chopping all that stuff up as you're going along. The bottom of that tilled area is a hard level bed while it's all fluffy stuff on the top of it. So you chop up everything and then you can use a bucket, lay that bucket kind of rested on the hard bottom and just scrape along and it makes it really easy to dig all that material out. And then the best part about it is at the end of the day, you have a nice usable pile of topsoil to use in a different area or maybe trim out your driveway and um, in different areas to grade it out and, and slope it out as needed. But you don't have piles of, so of sod or you don't have piles of dirt that have sod in them. They will sod clumps and chunks that are tough to spread out and uh, you got to go through and hand pick all those out. That tiller ahead of time, it does all that chopping, a, you know, right up front and then they kind of slowly decay further when they're in the pile too. It, Far and away, that was my preferred way to do it, over using the roto rake, over using uh, the disc, over using a rear blade, over any other tool, because it gave a good usable material after you were done. Okay, so why would you want to dig that material out? Well, a few reasons. One, topsoil it has a lot of organic matter in it, all right? And so there, it's, it can, you can grow grass, you can grow plants, you can grow everything else out of it. And so because of that nature, it's going to naturally decay, decompose, and so it's going to allow rock to sink down in it. Now you can avoid all that if you do put down geotextile or the road fabric underneath. That's more to come on that in just a little bit too on what I think about that, but if you put down the road fabric, you also don't need to worry about anything sinking down underneath there into the topsoil. That's an extra cost to consider, but it just depends what way you wanna do it. Now for me, if you look back along this area, you can see how it just kind of gently slopes down. It's all gently sloping down this way. And so I wanted to scrape out topsoil because I didn't want the top level, the top surface to change at all, okay? I wanted to essentially follow the grade down there. And so I needed to strip dirt out so that I could refill with gravel, maintain that slope so that water didn't pool up on the high side here and then start to cause washouts and ruts and everything going across there. And as you can see, this has worked out really well. The, the rain and everything just flows right across. It doesn't cause any issues. There's no washouts or ruts here at all uh, to worry about. And so that's, you gotta think about all the stuff with your terrain and what's going on with it and how you want to work with it. It's a lot easier to work with what you got than try to completely change it and work against it. Not that you can't, it just takes a lot more machinery, a lot more cost, a lot more time. Another thing you have to decide on is if you have to put a culvert in or not. Uh, we wanted to, actually made a video with our, our ranger driving through here. There's a huge mud puddle right in this area. Uh, the water just pooled here from everywhere. And so I figured this was a low spot, so we'd put one in. I don't, I don't think it's much of an issue for us anymore. We've built the, the drive up quite a bit so that the water stays off of the road and goes down into the fields anyways but put it there just to be safe um i still have to finish trimming this thing out i just dumped a bunch of a stone down here and i got to push it back and around it's been sitting here since last well that's at least last year at some point so it's just been low priority i mean we had we've had i mean very 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 heavy storms roll through here and this has never been an issue uh for us so it's something though, if you're gonna do it, do it early on. Uh, don't, you know, it'd be a big pain to come back through and put this in afterwards. Not that you couldn't, but just a lot of rework. And if you can avoid it, I mean, the better off you're gonna be. Now, a decision that you do have to make though is, is if you just wanna lay your culvert down on the existing terrain and then build your road over top of it, or if you wanna dig down so that you can see here, the, the top level doesn't change at all, right? It's just flat all the way across and you're digging down and putting the culvert down. Now I had to do, more work out here, kind of tapering down these sides and sloping that out to drain. And we used um, a tool called the ditch box. We had a lot of fun with that, a very project specific type tool. It's a box that makes ditches. And we put one all the way down this other side of the fence to really catch that water coming off and, and funnel it here to wash out over this way. And so I think that combination of things really helped, but it wasn't just digging this out and putting the uh, the culvert in there was a lot of other effort that had to go into just this one sub project as part of the bigger project so anyways this is why the stuff comes in stages right it's not like i'm sitting here doing this full time it's when i get some free time uh after work or sometimes we make a video i'll do chunks of this too and and kind of knock it out so it's just bit by bit but it's the kind of thing that it's just 
evolves over time and and it's probably good too to slow down and, and not do a project this big all at one time as well because it helps you well maybe digest things a little bit further to make sure that you're doing less rework overall which saves money one thing i remember about digging this culvert which is probably just a good note for viewers a bit of encouragement is something's always going to go wrong yeah you remember what went wrong with yeah that? yeah we hit the uh the fiber optic line yeah right down there and that's actually i'll show you here in a, in a little bit but there's an area that i knew was going to hold water <laughs> the grade was just not right back by my barn and i just knew that this fiber line was down there and i couldn't go any deeper without hitting it so i had to like scrape away a bunch of dirt to get the water to flow away and it, you know that's a, a a pretty lazy excuse i guess i could have called the fiber company and paid them however much money they would have needed to to come out and put that down way deeper i suppose but uh it does hold water the spot does hold water but it hasn't proven to be a challenge like it, it dissipates the following day it doesn't build up so much where it goes back towards the barn or anything else so it's it's a pretty small problem in the grand scheme of things all right so right here it's kind of a little bit lighter almost can you see that on the camera chris how it's a little bit lighter right in this area uh, this is where that water pools up you know i wanted it to go over that way but if i if i built this area up then it's going to be higher than than the concrete so it's going to potentially just pull up on the concrete it's going to pull up somewhere else right and so i would have had to do it's just a tough spot it's higher all over here it gets slightly low over there every once in a while on that and the edge of the driveway will get some water there but i wanted it to go this way it's just a <laughs> it's tough like almost kind of right along like a little channel right through here is where i is where i need it but our fiber comes right through here and it's not very deep either so it, it was i'm living with it is what i'm saying okay it's not perfect but i'm living with it it'll get wet it'll get sometimes a couple inches deep but it never lasts more than a day when it when it does and it's only in really hard rainstorms and then it's gone so it doesn't get back onto the driveway so you know that's one thing i could have improved on but it's it's good enough for me it works it's not causing any real problems so there's kind of a general theme though when it comes to a gravel driveway which is controlling water and where it goes what to do with it and so we've talked about in another area they're kind of letting it on the side of a hill just kind of sheet across it and not build up on the high side to rut things out you know just in front of where i'm standing we talked about putting in a culvert to again let that water go underneath the road the drive so you don't have to worry about it and then here you can hardly see it there's a little bit of a crown right on the uh, the horizon line there of the driveway but the idea being if you're on a, a pretty flat area like this then put a little hump a little bit higher in the middle so that if water does if it's coming down hard it's kind of just going off like an umbrella off to each side there and i will say in this area i have taken most of the crown out um, the reason that i've taken most of the crown out is snow removal okay so it's a lot easier to clear snow on a pretty flat driveway compared to a driveway that has that crown in it where you're either inadvertently scraping off the top of that crown with your pusher or your plow or your blower whatever it is um, and then leaving too much snow kind of over here it's it's just sometimes you don't know until you do it but it's just easier to not have much of a crown and i don't think you need much of a crown really if it's really exaggerated then they can almost at certain times be hard to drive on depending on the machines that you're that you're using on there so the flatter you can make it with a little bit of a crown so that it's not inverted right not like a bowl and and collecting water in the middle but just slowly tapering off towards the edges is going to make a big difference plus and it's probably a little hard to see right here because of that fence the growth underneath the fence but you're higher we're higher than on either side of the drive by yeah 12 inches yeah so that yeah you, fair point so that was another part of this process too was building up the drive uh, the gravel drive so that it was higher than the surrounding land in general so we wanted this to be the high point and not it was it was such a muddy ruddy mess because the driveway was lower than like everything else i mean eventually it gets lower you know the further away you go down there but this just seemed to be this big collection pool where there was 
ruts starting from 30 feet behind me to 50 feet the other side that were just full of water and it was such a pain. And so anyway, wanted to do what we could to avoid that. Now gravel's not cheap though. So what we did at, at Richland property that we used to have is we put down 22, 22A. So it was, uh, had a lot more clay content in it, um, but it was a lot cheaper material and to kind of build up a base. And so you could lay that down, get your infill in, um, and get a nice solid foundation and then we topped it off with 21 AA out there we started with 21 AA here too and this is a version of 21 AA this is a 21 AA that's limestone though um, I would have used this to begin with anyways I just didn't know they had it I, I don't know how I didn't know they have it because I was looking for this material it was really hard to find and then just randomly our, our aggregate supply around here had it so anyway that's why you see all limestone out here now i think it's beautiful i love the color um we're gonna freshen this stuff up too and just uh, i haven't freshened it up in i don't know well since the spring it's been two and a half months or so um it'll make it look amazing so let's have that discussion about road fabric and it's a love-hate relationship for me and i'll tell you if i think it's worth it or not but the first driveway we did the first 2000 foot driveway to other property we didn't use any road fabric. We used all the 22, we dug out, okay? Dug out a lot of topsoil, and then we used 22, and then we used 21 AA after that. And then, um, you know, kind of moved direction. We moved out here, kind of abandoned that property, so to speak, and actually just recently sold it. Uh, we no longer have that, but I did capture some video earlier this year. I went out there to, to get some things before we sold it off. And um, you can see what that driveway looks like if it's unmaintained, if it's not being used, just what nature does to a driveway that's just sitting there being reclaimed, essentially. And what you're gonna see out here is a driveway that's pretty actively used. It is maintained. And we're gonna do some more maintenance on it today. But there's still, there's a section of this driveway that has fabric and there's a section of it that doesn't and that's intentional that's to show you guys long term on well if it's a benefit or not and so starting from the road up front and then most of the lane almost to where we're standing right now had road fabric on it and then all the way around the barn with the exception of the big parking pad behind the barn where there's the trailers parked and things like that um, where the trailers are parked that had road fabric but nothing else back here does and the difference is going to be weed control that I found in the short term. And the long term, it could be stone that potentially kind of sinks down or gets crushed down into the earth and requires you to add more material sooner rather than later. That's gonna be more of a long-term test. In the short term though, it's mainly about weed control is what I'm finding. And even in the long drive where there is road fabric, you still have you know, stone that spilled over to the side beyond where the road fabric was. And so weeds do, they want to kind of encroach from the edges. And so you still have to find a way to maintain those, whether you're mowing things down, if you're running your, your tools uh, to regrade on a regular basis so it's disrupting and kind of dislodging all those, uh, those new weeds that are in there, or you can spray. You know, there's a lot of different ways to do it depending on the approach you want to take. But you can look up here as we're going along, there's gonna be areas, there's no road fabric down here. And you can see as you get closer to these edges here where the weeds are, I mean, this is two feet in, you know, and there's just weeds that are starting, and grass that are starting to come through. And part of that also is because as you get closer to your edges, it's naturally gonna be a little bit thinner base, a little bit thinner, less material that's there versus in the middle where you're gonna have more material naturally. So that makes a difference as well. Okay, so this area though is, it's probably the, the worst example. I'm gonna actually bring in more gravel here. There's just not enough. I, <laughs> it's weird, but it almost, it almost looks thin to me, you know, but there's a lot of weeds that are really encroaching. And, and again, the middle is the thickest part. So that's where the fewest weeds are at, but really a lot of them along the edge. There's just not a lot of material here. I gotta put more of it down. Um, but I, I'm trying to show you folks the, the pros and the cons. Like if you don't put enough material down, you're really gonna have a lot of weed problems. Um, in my opinion though, let's go back and look at this parking pad. This was the last section we did with road fabric or geotextile. So all straight, like pretend this road goes straight to the end, no road fabric. And you can see all the, all the weeds in there, but 
This all had road fabric and this had a, a, a decent amount of stone put on top of it. Got some weeds here, but see this is the this is the challenge. There's, you see there's there's soil. We got soil mixed in here. This is where a skid steer was sitting. That skid steer was sitting over here. And and I graded this all out, but the more I mess with it, you'll see more soil getting in there. But my skid steer was sitting here, had a bunch of mud on the tracks, and it just kind of fell off as we as it sat here. And then when we turned it back on to drive it, chunks of it fell off. And so you get topsoil mixed in and you're gonna start to get weeds. And so now, you know, I gotta do something about that. But if you wanna see the worst area, this is the biggest, it's the biggest mistake, I guess. Uh, I don't know what to do about it, but I'll show you. So here's our, our uh, parking pads that we put in for all of our attachments. I still really love this, but what do you see? If you look close, you see weeds through all of this stuff all along here. So the problem is the fact that you use all these tools a lot of them get dirt, topsoil on them, and when you move them around, set them back down, whatever it is, you got clumps and chunks of topsoil, kind of like where I showed you where the skid steer was at. Then nature does its thing. There's seeds, there's seeds in the topsoil, and it just starts germinating stuff basically everywhere. So I don't honestly know how to avoid that unless you hose off your tools before you put them down every single time, which... Um, Boy, that seems like a real pain. Otherwise, you're gonna wind up with stuff like this. And so it's kind of a pain in the butt. At some point here, I'm gonna to have to pull all these off of one side, probably spray it, rake it out. At that point, I'll probably add some, uh, some 21 AA limestone on top there just to make it match everything else too. But uh, this is the color of the, the regular 21 AA that you can see. It's a pretty looking, pretty looking material, but I mean, all the all the topsoil I've got in here from using different tools has really made a mess. Um, so that's a headache I got to deal with, and I don't know if I have the right solution besides hosing things off so there's no dirt going down on there. I don't know. Maybe I'm just lazy. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it going to help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all-natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not going to corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not going to freeze, and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Now to hit on the tools that you would use to install the gravel okay to 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 smooth it out initially and make it look well usable and drivable the, the biggest thing isn't a tool at all it's a driver it's a guy who can tailgate material and we've got a great one around here named tom who's it probably it, i don't even know how many hours dozens and dozens of hours of work uh, with the quantity of material that we have here by being able to tailgate it out and take 80 percent of the work out of each load that he dropped off you know, between having a bucket on the front of a tractor and then a land plane or a box plate on the back of it, it's just an amazing combination to knock out the high spots. You know, maybe when he's done, done dumping the load, maybe there ends up being, you know, a, a three foot pile at the end, but just using the bucket just to knock those down enough and then using a land plane or a box plate just to back and forth, up and down. You're just, you're just flattening it out and smoothing it out. It's a lot of fun to do. It's a, it's a fun project because it's hard to screw up, and if you do screw up, it's pretty easy to fix. Um, so that would be the benefit of using a lamp plane or a box blade as well, because you can install it with that tool, and then you can also maintain it down the road because gravel driveways need maintenance. You know, back here on the parking pad, there's some ruts from where uh, truck tires turned. Um, you know, I had a the trailer on hooked up, and it actually I needed to put it in four wheel drive because those rear two tires were digging holes. And so I got to fill those in, you know, there's just natural things that happen when you're driving tractors and turning and doing all sorts of stuff on here. So you got to, you got to smooth it out, go over it, freshen it up periodically and make it look nice again. Uh, sticks, leaves, all that kind of stuff fall down on it too. The weeds again encroach. And so you want to keep those at bay. So there's a lot of reasons, a lot of things that you need to do, but driveway, gravel driveway maintenance is pretty darn easy. And it's a very satisfying project to do. A tool we're going to use today though, is going to be the heavy duty dethatcher 
from CMP. So we sold the regular detacher from CMP, 60 inches wide, for a long time. That's just basically this first section here. It doesn't even have this robust of a frame. It's more of a frame uh, like that one there. And worked with moderate success, okay? It's not gonna do any kind of a heavy grade at all, but I've used this one out here a little bit playing around with it, and it is stinking awesome. So this is gonna be great for driveway drading. That's right, driveway, driveway drading. drading. <laughs> uh, actually dethatching your lawn. Um, great in dirt, like we've got some skid steer stuff that I chunked up up here in between getting attachments. So we'll smooth that back out. Uh, the lawn prep for, for seeding in the fall. It's just, this thing is so handy to have. Uh, I let our store manager, uh, Tyler, borrow this too so he could try it out and, and see what he thought about it. And he loved it as well. But it's just, it's still less aggressive than a landscape rake. So you can still use it on your lawn. Uh, but you know, you can do leaf collection with it, pile those things up, trail maintenance. Uh, it, it's it's just so handy to have. I, I, I can't even, it's one of the most, I did not think this was going to be an awesome tool. I honestly did. When I got it, when CMP said that they uh, came out with this version of it, I didn't think I was really going to like it that much. And since I've used it, I honestly can't believe how awesome it is. So anyway, we're going to use it today. Uh, we are going to freshen up our driveway, make it look nice again. And uh, that'll be our maintenance for the next couple of months. I'll probably do it one more time in the fall, um, probably like September. So we still have maybe two months for everything to get packed back down and settle in place before winter comes. Uh, I don't like to have a lot of fresh gravel before winter that can easily get scooped up and plowed away. I want it to be pretty firm and solid and in place. And um, that'll be it. Now two final closing thoughts here for you. One, I owe you an answer on road fabric if it's worth it or not. In my opinion, it is worth it. You know, we showed you a video of me snagging the road fabric back there with the, uh, the landscape rake. And it is, a, it is a headache if you do. But in the long run, the benefit of it, the lack of weeds in the short term is great. And I think the cost savings of not having the gravel sink down and having to add more of it um, on a more frequent basis is gonna be a, a benefit as well. And so it's just gonna require less maintenance over time. If you can afford to do it, I, I would, I, I really would. Um, otherwise, you know, I, in the corner of my eye, I can see these weeds popping through. I mean, they're, they're just popping through everywhere. And I've got a lot of material here, a lot of gravel here, and they're still coming through. So it's just an annoyance. Um, that's my take on it. So the other thing that I, that I want to talk about, this has come up. I've never used a compactor. I've never rented a compactor to, to compact the gravel down after I put it in. I've kind of let nature do its thing in time do its thing after we've driven over it. And also when our um, dump truck driver would come through, you know, we'd have the loads smoothed out. And so he was driving a full and then unloaded empty dump truck back and forth down this thing multiple times as well. And so that really helped to compact uh, the gravel into place. So I haven't found a need to run a compactor. I don't know, maybe some of you folks out there would. I am not a professional. This is not, I don't do this every day. I don't think it's complete rocket science. I think this turned out pretty good. Uh, Chris, do you think this looks pretty good? I think it's fantastic. Oh, I remember some you. mushy parts when we were driving in initially, but that settled down over time. Yeah. And then I'm just thinking, you're not driving 55 miles an hour. It's not, it's not, a, no. it's not a country road. No. It's a driveway. So yeah. I think that's an unnecessary expense from at least the experience we had at Richland and here. Good point. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I, I think I'm really, this is one of the projects I'm, I'm uh, most proud of that I've accomplished on my own with, with my own equipment. And again, the labor savings of being able to do it yourself. Sure. That's a trade-off too. your time doing this versus something else, but it's like stress relief is satisfaction. Um, it's just enjoyment. So it depends on how you want to look at it that way. But I think you could pretty much pay for a tractor and the tools and come out ahead versus hiring a company to come in and do a, a large project like this. If yours is a smaller project, that might be a different story, but there's always other projects you can tackle or tack on along the way too to help justify those cost savings. Now, the reason we make these videos, the reason we've made a lot of videos showing projects like the driveway installation along the way is because we sell them. So we want to, number one, know how the tools work, what's good and bad. And so when you folks have questions, we can have firsthand knowledge on, on what to share with you than to show you folks in videos how the tools work, if they're actually good or if they fall apart or what the good and bad features are about them. 
but then we ship nationwide too. So, you know, you're not just here local in Michigan, but all we do is ship products and probably 99% of what we sell is shipped to one of the lower 48 states. We can help you out. Go to goodworkstractors.com. If you're not sure what size to get, just shoot us an email. Give us your tractor making your model. Let us know what you're trying to accomplish. We can give you some suggestions. We'll give you the right size, the right hookup, all that kind of information. So you are set up right the first time instead of you're just guessing and trying to figure it out on your own. That's that's what we're here for. So on that note, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.